Sony put up a video showcasing a bunch of the 2024 games that are coming out. And there's a few things in here that I did not think were coming out in 2024. Specifically, they show Silent Hill 2 and Metal Gear Solid Triangle Snake Eater or Delta, whatever they want to call it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which I thought those were way off. I didn't think they had a release window, but this video is formally titled like the 2024 PlayStation, what's coming to PlayStation 2024 lineup, something like that. It's it's very much like not just coming to PlayStation soon, like 2024 is right in there. And there's a bunch mm -hmm. of stuff shown off that we we fully know is coming out this year. If, you know, it was right around the corner, there's uh, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, which is out on January 18th. The Last of Us Remastered is out on the 19th uh, of January. Uh, Last of Us, like Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, January 26th. Tekken 8, same day. Grain Blue Fantasy Relink is out uh, February 1st. Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League is out February 2nd. Helldivers is out on the 8th. Pacific Drive is on the 22nd. FF7 Rebirth is on February 29th. Dragon's Dogma 2 and Rise of the Ronin are both out on March 22nd. Final Fantasy 15, Dawn Trail is out 14. for summer. These are all things we know are on the way. And again, that is a killer lineup right out the gate. Mm -hmm. Like to be finding out that this is what's coming out in the top half of, you know, just the, the first few months. Mm -hmm. That's pretty, pretty cool. And then on top of that, they also show off Concord, which is that uh, PVP FPS from Firewalk Studios, which is they have a uh, really slick trailer that shows basically nothing about the game aside from like cool fonts and good music choice. Uh, there's Stellar Blade, which is like a hack and slash game from uh, the Blade and Soul illustrator from a Korean studio. There's Forever Skies, which is also sort of a known quantity because it's already on early access. Uh, Plucky Squire, we've seen a bunch of that. Foam Stars, we've played that. There's the casting of Frank Stone, which is the Dead by Daylight sort of super massive games cinematic adventure, expanding that whole universe. And then the big, the big two are just are Metal Gear Solid Triangle Snake Eater and Silent Hill 2, which... Silent Hill 2 wouldn't surprise me that much because we've been hearing about that for so long. But the Snake Eater remake, I thought was I thought that was way, way off. Yeah, same. I mean, I I, I have a tens. I mean, I think the, the everyone listening to the show or watching the show has the same thing. But like when you see a cinematic teaser trailer, that's just like a couple seconds long. At this point now, you your brain equates that with that is several years away. Thank you for the tone piece. Um, see you in, you know, 2025 or 2026. 20, 20, uh, I think what's interesting is that like, to be totally blunt, like a big part of this, uh, of not, not just our, our jobs, but um, just being fans of video games is it uh, sort of invariably at the end of the year, um, we look forward to the next year and we go, uh, next year is gonna be the biggest year ever. And like Xbox has a tendency of doing this a lot and people give them crap for kind of not delivering on those promises. But like just as as a group of, of people who love video games uh, going into 2023, we were like, this is undoubtedly one of the biggest games uh, years ever. I'm sure a mm -hmm. bunch of this stuff's going to get delayed. And some of it did, but most of it stuck the landing and it turned into just this tremendous year for games where it's like, Hey, what's your game of the year? No wrong answers. Like there's any of these mm -hmm. 10 games would, would totally work without major debate from, from anybody. Whereas in other years, it was like very clear cut answer here, maybe a couple of runner ups. Um, 2024 sort of felt different going in. Like it, it was like, oh man, this, you know, I saw a lot of chatter that it was like, oh, this kind of just feels like a, like a skip year. Like it's not really like a big but then looking at some of this stuff, I'm like, well, that doesn't mean that it's going to be weak. It doesn't mean it's going to be bad. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be as big, anywhere near as big as last year or anywhere near as big as uh, next year. But there's enough in this year that like gets me excited. And that's just from the stuff we know. I mm -hmm. was totally expecting the Game Awards to be packed with trailers for 2024 games. And then yeah. it had a lot of 2025 ones. And I was kind of yeah. surprised mm -hmm. by that. The fact that, you know, GTA came out and was like, hey, we're, we'll see you in uh at least at least 13 months you know like it was just that is further off than i was expecting uh notably noticeably absent from uh this this trailer is is wolverine that's you know that's in yep. the works that's not coming out for a cool minute i guess um but yeah it, i i'm i'm excited by this uh it's it's cool to see that like silent hill 2 and metal gear solid are, are in in there like they wouldn't put them in there unless that was that I mean, it's the is that, devs is it, have basically said that, like, hey, these are we're these are coming this year. There's like, also yeah. there's also like a glimpse of gameplay from Metal Gear that I didn't I don't think I've seen before. I haven't been keeping like super tight track, but they had the the big CG reveal trailer, which, like you said, Brian, right. kind of just doesn't really give the biggest amount of confidence for like this is ready to go soon. 
And have yeah. we seen, have, what have we seen from Silent Hill 2? I can't even remember. Um, I, I think not it much. I think it's literally just what we saw here. I yeah. yeah. I also, I feel like they have just like flooded the channel with noise regarding that IP over the last few months and not in mm -hmm. a good way. And it's, it's, I, I mean, I'm going to play it because I'm a huge fan of survival horror and the original is awesome, but like it's taking like taking that IP and splitting it in like seven different directions. And one of them was that like weird, like AI generated narrative thing that you could vote on that they had to start, you know, mm -hmm. ban banning people in the chat for ruining or whatever. Like it just, yeah, that was just like a major misstep. So I'm hoping that they can refocus and do something better with that. Um, and yeah, Last of Us Part Two Remastered is out incredibly soon. Uh, Naughty Dog's been teasing clips of that, um, which is really interesting. Like. It, I like the entire concept of like showing the kind of DVD extras, uh, developer commentary, you know, director's cut behind the scenes, deleted scenes stuff like that's that's an awesome approach to video games. Uh, video games are historically um, kind of like top secret puppet shows where they don't let you see anything happening in the theatrics in the back. They don't tell you about what was cut. They don't tell you about what um, what didn't make it in there or like what they tried to do or what changed. It's always just like a big secret secret. So like having this, this game that's been out for a long time, that's, you know, um, really awesome and getting more of it for 10 bucks extra is mm -hmm. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to a lot of these things. Um, Prince of Persia blew me away when I played it at PAX last year, yeah. PAX West. So I'm really excited for that to drop in what, nine days um so that's looking really good for me uh final fantasy 7 rebirth is my number one for 2024 so um i've only got like what a month and a half for that i'm like that mm. one's that one's giving me some anxiety because like i really want to play uh yakuza and they're like it's the biggest one yet it's at least 100 hours <laughs> if you do everything and i was like uh i'm gonna find 100 hours in the month between that and ff7 which yeah. is another huge massive game like and then there's dragon's dogma like we are getting you know it obviously depends on your your personal taste and like what gets your attention but this is a pretty steady clip of game releases mm -hmm. during what is historically a quiet part of the year there's usually not a ton of big stuff but this is a cool mix of you know big big and small kind of really just covering all the different we've, different bases we've seen the we've seen devs kind of shift that uh that slower period from the january february's to more like april may like is kind of started to shift over the least recent years um, where January and February have been big, big, big months. Like, you know, we got Elden Ring at the beginning of 2022, like, and that was just dominated. Um, and then what, last year we had Horizon Forbidden West in February. Um, I'm sorry, uh, not last year, it was 2022 as well. Um, but yeah, like we've seen that. Um, That's the Horizon know. curse though. It always comes out the, like yeah. the, the week of the other big fantasy open world yep. game that dropping the week before on. yeah horizon three dropping a week before gta uh six well oh, man <laughs> let's uh let me let me be a a bit of a wet blanket real quick just so like it's a what just, now a what now no um like this is this is still pretty weak on the first party exclusive front just like oh yeah no completely was. this is like this. let's let's call it let's call it like we see it like i mean like spider-man 2 was great um we got some psvr stuff and you know there's gran turismo last year but like other than that uh like we still don't know a lot of what their studios are working on mm -hmm. we still i mean based on leaks like wolverine's not this year yep it's just not happening um death stranding 2 is not this year like it's not there's there's a bunch of stuff we just got like a a pretty meaty god of war dlc so i feel like that that studio is going to lay low for a little while um Still no official announcement on like Ghost of Tsushima 2. Um, we don't know, like there was obviously more stuff in the Insomniac leaks, like indicating more games. Many of those, according to that information, years and years away. There's a, like they they own a bunch of studios, and I want I would I want a little more clarity on uh when we can play those games and what they're working on. Obviously, game development takes a long time. These mm -hmm. these things are like massive, massive undertakings at this <clears> point, right? This is it takes like five, six, seven years to make like a big triple A first party game these days. So like, I'm not being greedy or being like, hurry up. But um, this in terms of like, if you bought a PS5 for just or for mostly exclusives and stuff like that, like, it's slowly gotten a little better, a little better, kind of like a year at a time. But we haven't really had like a year that's like packed with heavy hitters. Um, 
And I hope what's, hopefully what's that changes. The, what's the, I mean, I know the answer to this question. Like obviously like first party, like PlayStation exclusives made in house have like mm -hmm. a certain level of polish to them that is, makes sense. They obviously don't want to reflect mm -hmm. poorly on their own, their own stuff. But there's also a bunch of, you know, uh, FF7 Rebirth is yeah. console exclusive yep. for the immediate future. Uh, Pacific yeah. Drive, I think so, right? Yep. Maybe. PC, PC and PlayStation for that yep. one. Yep, Helldivers is PC and PlayStation. Rise of the Ronin is PC and PlayStation. Um, mm -hmm. Stellar Blade. Yep. I'm, yeah, and Foam Stars, I think. I believe like, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, what's the what's the problem? Like, I, I don't know, I guess I understand I, that people want to have their sort of their, you know, their tribalism. They want to pick their team and be like, I, I bought this box and this is the mm -hmm. box that I love. But at the same time, I ultimately don't, I don't care. Like if they're multi-platform, yeah. they're, they're, if we're, I'm just happy we're getting a steady stream of games. Like that's, yeah, no, that, totally. I'm, yeah, I'm fine with totally. that. And, and like, you know, to, to sort of counter myself here, like when I turn on Netflix, I'm not like, how many of these are Netflix originals? Like, I don't give a shit, right? Yeah. Like as long as like there's, there's good movies in front of me to watch, um, then I'm happy. And it's the same thing with like, when I open up Game Pass, I'm like, Oh, cool. There's a game. I'll download it. I'll play it. Oh, mm -hmm. do I like it? I'll keep playing it. Do I not like it? I'll delete it. Cool. Move on with my life. Um, but I think with PlayStation, like so much of their identity is built around their in-house studios. And selfishly, I just want, I want more of that. And I want to see more of them. I mostly just want Ghost of Tsushima too. That's all I, I think. I, mm -hmm. I think the thing is, is like since 20, what, 16, 2017, we've been with the exclusion of last year, we've been spoiled. We got a good like five, six, seven year run of big games and multiple big games every year yeah. dropping for like as exclusives for PlayStation consoles. Um, and so like, we're just kind of in that lull period where devs are in the middle of R and D and getting the next big ideas prepped. So like, I think 2024 may be a slower year for PlayStation, but I think 2025 and 2025 to like 2028 to 2029 are going to be just jam packed with big PlayStation stuff. It's just kind of a cycle how uh, game devs go. And you you know you look at Microsoft where Xbox was been has been in this uh, kind of slower period for the last couple of years, and they're starting to pick things up. And we're going to start seeing more bigger things from Xbox over the next couple of years as well. So I think it's just like that normal cycle for you know exclusives. We're yeah. going to have those those kind we're of droughts. I mean, we're seeing a, a funny thing happen here where there was just rumors going around that or, you know, rumblings that um, uh, Hi-Fi Rush, which was formerly Xbox exclusive, is going to be coming to Switch, maybe. Or mm -hmm. it's, you know, uh, Microsoft consoles, but yeah. 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 And Microsoft's talked about getting its getting its games on other 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 places. And Sony has this long history of doing things, making, you know, proprietary first party stuff. But we've seen them branch mm -hmm. out into putting games on PC. It's also really funny to me that Sony, which owns a media production company. There's Sony Pictures and all that. We also have, uh, <laughs> we have The Last of Us on HBO. We have uh, Horizon on Netflix. We have- God of War on Prime. God of War on Prime. We have- uh, Legend Ghost of Zelda of... in theaters. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Sony's producing the Legend of Zelda movie. I don't, we haven't, I don't think yeah. we haven't had a chance to talk about that on here, but it's really interesting to see. Yeah, like that's a very kind of, that's mm -hmm. sowing your wild oats. That's really, it's, it's kind of spreading yeah. yourself out there to, to just kind of, I don't know, I guess, Diver diversify your did, you, your did you mention twisted metal on peacock oh twisted yeah twisted metal on peacock. Peacock. yeah exactly they're all I over mean, the place they're all over the still place. That, there's that ghost of tsushima movie rumor which i um, i want to say is Lionsgate. i think i just see like chad stahelski's doing it yep. i don't know who's right, attached, right. but yep. it's i don't know yeah that's kind of wild like we're we're so we're so accustomed to looking at sony as like this you know they it's all first party stuff it's all about exclusivity but clearly mm -hmm. that's not really what's happening right now all the all the way you know and we're no you're of, right and that's yeah. that's a, a big part of modern fandom now is just sort of not getting everything you love in one specific spot right like yep. last year if you were a nintendo fan you got a mario movie and a theme park to go to and maybe a bunch of action figures and stuff like that um you also got a big new zelda game and a new mario game so but like mm -hmm. jada you're right like they 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 you know this is their super move like they charge it up, they let it out, and then it recharges. And like, you're never gonna get, I don't think you'll ever get another year like 2020 where we got Ghost of Tsushima, The Last of Us, and the PS5, which launched with, mm -hmm. you know, like stuff like uh, Demon Souls and a new Astro game. And like, that that bug was snacks. really them. Yeah, yeah, that <laughs> bug, bug snacks. That was really them firing on all cylinders, right? And like they had, you know, there was a lot going on and there was also, there was a pandemic. So it felt like mm -hmm. a miracle that any of that stuff was even coming to fruition. Yep. The fact that like, you know, consoles even got manufactured and shipped that year. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. 
is was a miracle and so like again th yeah this is just me being selfish and i i just i want a little more like i i feel like last year the mm -hmm. ps5 did really well it did incredibly financially it sold a million mm -hmm. billions billions of units or whatever but like if you look at the first party lineup in just through that lens it was a little underwhelming um but yeah, that's fine. you know you never know you never know like this year could be a bigger year for that next year could be a bigger year for that but like if you if you look at your box just for exclusives then yeah you'll be let down but if you if you play everything everywhere wherever you want then you'll be fine